Hello, my friends. This is Miss V from the Popcorn Kit. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Now, we know this is a day on, not a day off. It's a day when volunteers provide service to their communities and to others in need. Just get out and do something positive for your community. It's a day on, not a day off. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my dream of Martin Luther King. This is a dedication. A young lady wrote this book for her brother, and it's by Faith Ringgold. I hope you enjoy this book. I'm going to make sure you see all the pictures. Look at that. Beautiful illustrations. I've always been a dreamer, but the only dream I can remember are the ones I dream when my eyes are wide open. Once I go to sleep, I rarely remember my dreams. However, one day while watching a television program about Martin Luther King Jr., I slept and had a dream that I will never forget. In my dream, Martin appeared first as a child in a place so huge that it encompassed the whole world and all its people. There were children, old and young. Folks were men and women of all colors, races, and religions. They carried bags containing their prejudice, hate, ignorance, violence, and fear which they intended to trade for hope, freedom, peace, awareness, and love. Some people had bigger bags than others, but everybody had something to trade. In this place, there were steps that led right up to the light shining bright in the sky. Young Martin and his father, Daddy King, his mother and his grandmother, Mother Dear, and his brother and sister, A.D. and Christine, led the climb up the steps to reach the light. Everyone was singing words of old hymns. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Then a terrible thing happened. Young Martin's family disappeared and he was left alone except for his closest friend, a boy who lived across the street and the boy's mother. They were standing on the school steps when the boy's mother told young Martin to go away. This is a school for white children, she said, but I am starting school now too said young Martin proudly. You must go to the colored school, she barked. But why, asked young Martin, because we are white and you are black, the boy's mother answered. Then young Martin saw a policeman. The policeman was the same one who once called Daddy King a boy. This is a boy, Daddy King said, pointing to young Martin, and I am a man. My name is Reverend King. The policeman said no more, and Daddy King drove away. But in my dream, young Martin was alone, and the policeman ran after him, swinging a club and yelling, Halt, boy! 
Halt, boy. Young Martin ran as fast as he could. He saw a bus and got on it. The bus driver was the same one who had Martin and his teacher stand up so that the white people could sit down. In my dream, the bus driver roared at young Martin. There are no seats on this bus for Negroes. Young Martin ran from the bus into a crowd of people who were marching and carrying signs, protesting segregated buses. Young Martin was happy to read the signs calling for freedom and justice because these were problems facing his people. Young Martin joined the demonstrators who were singing, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around. All children have equal rights to learn. Separate is not equal. Peace, freedom, and jobs. Ride free across America. We want to sit down like everyone else. Amer every American has a right to vote. Register now. Some of these signs are still relevant today, aren't they all? Hmm. But then police on horseback trampled the peaceful demonstrators. And police on foot turned water hoses on them, knocking them down. They attacked them with dogs and beat them with cattle prods. Drenched, ragged, and bleeding, the crowd stopped marching and started singing. Young Martin and all the demonstrators were arrested and thrown into a police wagon and taken to jail. While in jail, young Martin remembered that his mother had told him about slavery and lynching and that despite the bad treatment of his people, he was a good, he was good as anyone. Mother Deer came to get young Martin. She took him in her arms and he told her about all the awful things that had happened to him and asked her why. Although you are only six years old, you can't accept the way things are. You want to find a way to change things and you will, said Mother Deer. But not now. Today is Sunday, and we are going to Sunday school and church. Daddy King will preach a sermon, and your mother will direct the choir, and you will sing Amazing Grace. In my dream, as young Martin sat in church that day listening to Daddy King preach, they appeared in front of him a very small but powerful holy man from India named Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi told young Martin about the power of love to create change and about how he had led more than three million of his people to freedom through peaceful resistance. 
young Martin had found the answer to helping his people in Gandhi's teaching. Now Martin no longer appeared in my dreams as a child, but as a minister of his own church with a beautiful wife and four children. Many people came to ask the great man to help them. The first was a woman who had been arrested for not giving up her seat on a bus to a white man. And her name was Rosa Parks. A large meeting called to protest Rosa Parks' arrest. The group called for a boycott of segregated buses, sit-ins at segregated lunch counters, voters' registration so that all black people could vote, equal education for all children, decent housing and jobs for all people. the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The King was, and King was its leader. He led his people to the nation's capital where he spoke with such a powerfully resonant voice that everyone was deeply moved. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. King painted a picture of his dream saying, I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia and the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream today. In my dream, I could see King's four little children looking up at King's vision of a better world. And then King appeared in my dream with black people and white people sitting together on buses and eating at lunch counters and voting together and when the children were going to school together and living together and King was very happy. But suddenly there was a noise like a firecracker and I knew Martin Luther King was dead. In my dream people were crying just as we had on the day he was killed. Daddy King, Mother, Mother Dear, A.D., Christine, King's wife, Coretta, his four children and his many friends and supporters came to light an eternal flame in memory of the slain hero. Even the President of the United States was there. The entire world was in mourning. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., 1929 to 1968. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last.
And as the dream goes, suddenly I was back in that huge place with men, women, and children of all colors, races, and religions. This time we had come to mourn Martin Luther King's death by trading in bags containing our prejudice, hate, ignorance, violence, and fear for the slain hero's dream. We emptied the bags into a great pile and as the last bag was dumped, the pile exploded into a fire so bright that it lit up the whole world. There emblazoned across the sky were the words, every good thing starts with a dream. A hushed silence came over as we heard Martin Luther King's words resound through the air. The sound of his voice was so clear in my dream that it woke me up. When I opened my eyes, King was there on the TV screen and he was saying, and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And here is Faith Ringgold's dream. You know, I remember my parents having us march every year for the holiday for Martin Luther King. And I remember Stevie Wonder. He produced a song called Happy Birthday to You. And I'm sure many of you sing that song now. No, I'm not going to sing it because you know I can't sing. But I, I, No, I'm not going to sing it. But anyway... We love Dr. Martin Luther King. We love you, Stevie Wonder. We love every parent that made their kids get out in two feet of snow with wet boots, freezing cold, marching in the nation's capital to ensure that this dream would come true. We still have a long way to go, guys, but we can do it. Young, old, white, black, red, yellow, purple, blue. It doesn't matter. Our blood is red and we all share the same vision. To have peace and to have love. Miss V wishes you a happy Dr. Martin Luther King Day. This is a day on, not a day off. I send you love, I send you peace, and I send you joy.